Hi, I'm Joel Lima, editor of The Economy, and this is Frontline. Here with me, I've got Jonas Kano, sales director of UK and Ireland at Epics Everywhere. Jonas, thanks a lot for talking to me. That's uh, okay. Where do you see, you're an edge data center company, so where do you see edge data centers going? What's the market demand out there right now? I think edge data centers is growing. I think that the market is now moving away from the large monolithic sites that you see in the metropolitan areas. And because of streaming, because of big data, because of cloud, where digital transformation means that data is wanted everywhere, like smart cities, then you need smaller data centers in a decentralized fashion. So within the regions, close to the source of that data center and close to the storage of that data center. To give an example, you know, you have, let's say, smart cities and they will have cameras. And rather than the camera taking a picture and then sending all that information back to be processed, the processing takes place there. And then when you need a particular picture for a particular time, then you can draw that data. So essentially, where the camera processes that picture is an edge site, very close to the camera. So that's happening now across the world, and we're involved in that. Okay, but so some of the critics about edge data centers talk about security, the physical security of these sort of sites. How do you ensure that these micro data centers don't get attacked physically by people with less good intentions. No, well, it's a good point. But uh, all the, the physical and security um, uh, apparatus that would be within a normal data center still applies to an edge site. So there's a misconception that edge sites are very small. But not really. They're still relatively large data centers, you know, like uh, maybe 20, you know, 10,000 square feet or something like that. Um, but they're a lot smaller than the big sites. But all the security is exactly the same. Um, the physical security, the software security, the encryption, it's exactly the same as any normal data center. It's just, it's decentralized. It now is very close to the source of data center, which means that the source of the information, which means that you have more of them everywhere. So it's the same security. -wise. So for, if you consider an edge data center, data center with 10,000 square feet, for example, um, what would you call a data center with one rack, for example? Right, so that's a micro. Okay, so you just got micro, um, you just call it micro it, edge. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, so okay. micro edge really is down to the term of the function of the data center, as opposed mm. to the size of the data mm. center. But clearly, because edge sites need to be close to the source, they tend to be smaller than the large monolithic sites. But essentially, it's the function of it. Um, now, when it comes to the size, yes, you can have a micro data center, um, and they are few and far between at the moment. I mean, you're right, security might be an issue there, but I'll give you an example of where micro data centers can come into the fray. Um, you have a lot of developers now that are building houses, normal estates, modern houses, where they will put data in a, in a, a server within the boiler, within the house, and then they'll have a contract with the tenants of the house, or the owners of the house, that there's data that will be used in their house. So you have the physical security of the house itself, but then every single house within the estate together will form a data center. But individually, they are micro data centers. Okay. So that's a new wave of what's that's happening concept, within the marketplace. Yeah. Um, so, you know, either way, there would always be security, whatever the size of the site would be. Okay. And then when it comes to business like yourselves, what are the investors looking for? Uh, what, what are they expecting to get out of you as a business? Well, like with any investors, uh, it's about return investment. Um, okay. It's about yield over time. Um, the good thing about the marketplace now is that the investors are varying. So yes, you have institutionalized investors. Um, so you'd have equity partners, uh, you'd have banks, uh, you'd have your real estate investment trusts, your REITs. Um, and they all want to invest in data centers, so they're there. But then you have a varied form of investment. Uh, you would have, you'd have uh, corporate uh, property development investors, you'd have managed services, companies who want to invest. You have end users themselves that decide, well, we don't want to own the data center. We don't want to um, manage a data center, but we need a data center. So therefore, why don't we invest in a company that can do this for us? So now you have a plethora of investors, and when that is set to grow, only because data is growing, you know, only because digital transformation is everywhere now. Every business has to become a digital business in itself. So all that data has to be stored somewhere. And wherever it's stored, it's a physical infrastructure which becomes an investment asset class in itself. So a lot of this is happening. There's a lot of growth in this, um, and there's, there's good points of that, and also there's 
not so good points of that um, because why are they not so good points? Well, there's I wouldn't use the word negativity per se, but concerns in the sense now that this now it's opened up and there's a lot of investors that are involved. They're putting pressure on you know returning investments sometimes before maturity actually happens, and then there's a real consideration of exit strategies. What are we going to do with this investment over the next five years or ten years? But then the infrastructure that's within that is not an investment, it's just infrastructure of a company that's trying to grow. So what happens when in five years time an investor wants to pull out, when you've got the infrastructure that is now at the peak state to keep the company afloat? So you've got that dichotomy that's going to happen at some point. Um, so it's something where investors, certain investors are realizing that. We as a company only like to deal with investors that have a very long term plan with us. So that would be a minimum of 10 years, but we tend to have an average of about 15 years uh, of an investment life cycle. Because then that gives the time for companies to decide what they're doing with the infrastructure, depending on what the investment, what happens to investment after the 15 year period. And then not looking at the investors they work with, looking at the wider pool of investors out there, do you think they know well enough this market? Do they come to you, say we want to invest in you, or do you still have to go out there looking for new investors? Well, they come to us, but you're right, they don't really know the market per se. Um, they know that the market is making money. They see all the indices okay. of the market growing and it's going through the roof. They see the mergers and acquisition numbers, and they think, well, we need to be part of this market. So it's now being well-defined, um, it's now being established as a well-defined asset class. Um, so investors know that. And as you know, with any financial investor, they just want, they, they rush to that. When it, the difference is, unlike normal property investment, is it's very technical, you know, and it depends on the, cost, the business that's involved within that data center. So there's a lot of advice from ourselves when it comes to investors, but other companies, uh, property development companies and consultants like CBRE and uh, JL that have now created data center um, practices are there to advise these, these uh, investors what to do with these data centers and how to invest in these data centers. Um, but there's a lot of appetite either way. As long as the numbers are stacking up, as long as there's growth um, for the unforeseeable future. Which is pretty good to be for a long time. For a long time, only because it's the underlying um, growth of data in itself. So that's the, the driver. And as you know, there is no end in sight to how quickly data can grow. Hmm. Okay. But you mentioned mergers and acquisitions, for example. We know the market has been really hot over the last few months, especially this year. Mm. Uh, some big, big acquisitions, multi billion dollar ones. Is an MA on the cards for it, ethics? <laughs> well, you know, um, I wouldn't like to say, to say. Uh, but you never leave your options, you never know, close your options, you always leave your options open. So there is a possibility of that in the future at some point. But now we are focused on growing as a company. Um, we call ourselves the first ever global data center proximity network in the sense that as much as it's global but it's also local because we want to be in all regions around the world because edge sites is a localized scenario you know it doesn't have to be large sites within a particular metropolitan area and so I think we have a long way to go before we start considering if there is an exit strategy um, and to be fair a lot of the time our management are thinking once we've grown this network what can we do to take it to the next level rather than exiting the strategy? Would you would an IPO help you or would you prefer to continue uh, possibly. To be private? There is, uh, it depends, it really does depend. Uh, we do have equity partners at the moment. Um, they do have deep pockets. So we work with Infovia and Tiger Infrastructure. They specifically deal with infrastructure investment, which is a new trend that's happening for investors. Um, and so it, it, it does depend. But uh, so it's either we continue to grow the company to where we feel the company can be Still beyond really the physical infrastructure, and that might be a hint for you. Um, but you never know, an exit strategy might be there. One thing I'd like to mention though, is uh, that ethics do more than just physical infrastructure. We also make products for the data center. Uh, these products are under the radar. A lot of people don't know about these products yet because they're developed for our data centers, but they are, Revolutionary. They will be revolutionary. So, when are you going to launch them? Uh, well, uh, you have to wait and see. What sort of products are they, though? They're data center products they around, hardware, software, around security, software. Yeah, they're, they're hardware and software. So, it's around security, around artificial intelligence um, within the data center arena. Um, they're around power management. So, these are the areas that we look for ways to make our data centers more efficient, more effective. Um, and then, say, and then once we've got a product we think that the market would need, then we'll consider launching it. 
And when we do, you'll be first to know about it. Okay. Uh, and then in terms of expansion, your map on your website shows a lot of dots in a lot of places in the world. So from the Middle East to South America to Asia to Europe to North America, literally everywhere. Uh, what are the plans for the expansion? So we're, we're in four continents at the moment. Uh, we have nine live data, data centers. We have 12 being built at the moment. Um, we, we will go as far as the industry, the environment will take us as such. We're thinking that um, 300 is not a bad number, um, but we're not sticking to numbers. We're just growing exponentially. And as, as long as customers need um, our space, need our agility as a company, need our service, wherever it is in the world, we'll be there. And we go as far flung as Morocco to you know, the States to you know, uh, France and Europe and various places. Um, so if we can be in five continents, we can. We're already in the Arctic Circle. So that just gives you an example. So you go everywhere, essentially. That's why we call Etix everywhere. There we go. Okay, Jonas, thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com. 